No, it's not too early to call the Xbox 360 nostalgic. If you're a game-loving kid like me and also a reader, you probably snuck one of these into the bathroom stall to flush 10 minutes of your math class away. In a time where Twitter and YouTube gaming podcasts were in its infancy, magazines just like this were my portal into the gaming conversation. Not that kids today don't like to read, but have you ever seen a kid carrying around a gaming magazine lately? How about a magazine in general? I am so, so nostalgic thinking about these days. The heydays of the 360, the PS3, and the Wii. This was by far my favorite gaming generation. Now, I didn't just pick any old video game magazine. I went with this particular one because it's by far the one that sticks in my memory the most. And I think it'd be cool for us to take a little nostalgic trip through one of the magazines from Xbox's glory days, which I know at this point feels like a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But first off, Xbox 360 magazines were awesome. They even came with a freaking demo disc. How sick is this? I mean, my god, this thing had six demos on it. Uh, it had WWE Smackdown vs. Raw, it had Need for Speed Carbon, Lego Star Wars The Original Trilogy, Sonic the Hedgehog, Fusion Frenzy, and Tenchu Senpan. I hope I said that right. And some of the extra content. It says 2006 Game of the Year awards, backward compatibility update, holiday Xbox quiz and review roundup. So yeah, not only do you get for your $7 a pretty sweet magazine, but you also get a little demo disc, which, you know, if you were a kid back then and wanted to try a couple games without spending 60 bucks a pop, it was is worth your time, I think. This is a really cool example of just physical marketing that you saw, you know, not that long ago in the early slash mid late 2000s that, I mean, you just don't see this anymore, guys. Let's talk about it. Let's deep dive into this one together and see what cool, fun things we can find. This cover alone makes me chuckle and gives me all the good old days feelings. And this was back when Xbox as a brand was pretty brutal, especially to PlayStation. Like. PS3 crushing brilliance, the definitive verdict. 2007, the best gaming year ever? Yes, yes it was. 20 unbeatable holiday gifts, oh my gosh guys. That is the 360 face plates that we used to get. I think those were about 20 bucks a piece too at GameStop. I actually had a Halo 3 face plate. It was so, so cool. Opening it right up guys, we start off with a giant two-pager of Lost Planet. This game, guys, reminds me of a few things. One, snow days, being off from school, like in middle school, and then being able to play this game and kind of imagine myself as the protagonist in this game during snow days is really, really cool. And I actually still have and love that game, guys. It is a very, very good, interesting third-person shooter game that Capcom came out with back in, I think it was 06. But I uh, really love Lost Planet. It is just super cool to check out all the different previews for upcoming games that this magazine had. Oh my gosh, just initially flipping through, guys, a lot of Guitar Hero ad advertised on there, Guitar Hero 2 in particular. That was another huge, huge franchise on the 360 and on the PlayStation. I think Rock Band might have been the next year actually, so it wouldn't have popped up yet, but Guitar Hero, man, that was a big one. Sonic 06, I distinctly remember being a pretty early game for both the 360 and the PlayStation 3. An initial draw to it, I think, were the graphics at the time, the HD graphics, like anything else with that generation, but definitely recall this game being pretty rough. There was Overlord and Eternal Sonata was previewed, as well as Battlefield Bad Company. By the way, awesome awesome game. Bad Company are some of my favorite first-person shooters from back in this day, and I really wish they'd bring Bad Company back. And of course, in the middle of this glorious edition of Xbox Magazine, you had the several page long guide that gave you a good solid preview of the epicness that was Gears of War. You have a nice picture of Marcus Phoenix. It gave you a preview of the combat, some of the gore, some of the kills, some of the weapons that you would use. I just remember pouring over all of these details and loved reading. Like I say, guys, I poured over this magazine, read every single detail, just ate it all up. The graphics might not look like much on paper, but 
If you were there back then, you know what I'm talking about. Gears of War on an HD 720p television. I remember seeing it on my cousins. He had bought one and it just was the most detailed, mind blowing thing. You were like, oh my God, I just cannot believe this is a video game now. And yeah, nowadays we have much higher resolutions, much smoother frame rates. But back then I'm telling you as a kid that didn't know any better, it looked amazing. Uh, now we've come to the holiday gift guide for the Xbox magazine. Definitely remember a lot of these little items here. 60 bucks for a year of Xbox Live Gold. That doesn't seem too bad, I ain't gonna lie. The 360 wireless headset, $60, holy crap. And by the way, 60 bucks for the most uncomfortable wireless headset you've ever worn in your life, I promise. Here is a Westinghouse of all brands, LCD HD TV. It is 1080p, which for back then was like, you know, the highest end resolution you could basically buy, but it was only 37 inches, the screen size, and it was $1,500. You could buy a monster, probably OLED, maybe close to 75 inch flat screen television for that nowadays. But back then, HD was expensive. It was awesome, but it was really, really expensive. The Xbox Live Vision Cam for 40 bucks. No comment. A beautiful Turtle Beach headset uh, for $60. The price of those has not changed much. And a JTEC control center. I don't really understand what that is, but it was 130 bucks. Uh, here's the face plates that we talked about, custom face plate. And I was actually right on the money. It was $20, go figure. That's a pretty sick face plate, by the way. And there you go, guys. If you missed my book content, there is a HD DVD player in the shape of a hardcover book. So there you go. Even when we don't talk books, we cannot escape books. I only knew one person that owned one of these things and uh, God bless that person. I love them, but yeah. This thing did not last too long. Also, Microsoft Zune, for anyone that bought one of those, <coughs> I actually had one. <coughs> but yeah, the Zune was actually a pretty cool device that I'm fairly sure has, for whatever reason, kept its value. I don't know if that's for nostalgic reasons or for what exactly, but the Zune was actually a pretty sweet little device. Gosh, even the cell phone advertisement is kind of crazy. Only the cool kids in my school had Motorola Razor phones. Shout out to the cool kids, I guess. I never had one, but I still think they're pretty sharp looking. And Viva Pinata! Oh my God, that game is super underappreciated. Love that game as well. Now guys, how it normally worked was toward the back end of the official Xbox magazine that you bought, there would start to be some video game reviews. Let's take a look at some of the reviews in this particular magazine. And of course guys, if you were a kid that could only buy a video game every time he saved up 60 bucks, you remember taking anything you could get and of course, bringing home one of these puppies, the Burger King Xbox 360 games. Sneak King, one of the all-time 360 classic games, if you know, you know. that The verdict on that was a six out of 10. <laughs> they did Sneak King wrong, man. Reservoir Dogs got a four. Dance Dance Revolution Ultra Mix 4 got an eight. Very solid. Now we get to a review that's pretty interesting. Again, this is a game that I distinctly remember releasing in the early days of the 360. And that is Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which actually got an Xbox editor's choice in the magazine. I definitely remember this game being pretty sweet, actually. It was like a, a co-op team of four Marvel character kind of beat em up slash maybe RPG game for the 360. And the official Xbox magazine here actually gives it a pretty dang good score. For the 360, it got an 8.5, and shockingly enough, for the original Xbox, they gave it a 9, so the original Xbox version got a higher score. If I'm reading this correctly, they actually gave this game a higher score because it was cheaper on the original Xbox. I don't think I've ever seen that. That seems to be the case. Man, that is kind of a strange reason. So they gave half a point for quote unquote better value. I don't think it has anything to do with the game. So that was kind of odd, but you know, a sign of the times, I guess. And we have good old WWE Smackdown versus Raw 2007. I never played this game, so I have no idea if you guys have. Leave a comment below and tell me how awesome or crappy it was, but apparently it was an 8.5 according to official Xbox magazine. There's also some more nostalgic reviews in here for Doom, 
which got an 8, Dig Dug, Open Season, which got a 7.5 and a 6 respectively. And of course guys, in all this for the Gears of War review, you knew Xbox was going to do the right thing. Of course, a 10 out of 10. For me personally, the memories that this game holds and the fun that I had playing this, it's probably a 10 out of 10 for me too. Yes, the campaign's short, but man, I just cannot let go of the memories I had with this game, with this series in general. Xbox knew what they were doing. They hyped up a good game to hype up and a series that would last for years and years after this magazine. Ah, now this is really, really interesting. But in this preview, it says 2007, the best gaming year ever, an eyes on glimpse of the future today. Interesting that they thought these would be amazing. Some of them definitely are, but Shadowruns pointed out that was a pretty good game in my opinion again lost planet awesome awesome game crackdown oh my gosh crackdown was so cool also came with a grand theft auto demo if i remember correctly Two human which was also really really hyped up but kind of failed to deliver on that hype bioshock such an amazing game and man we are not even close to done halo 3 forza motorsport 2 freaking mass effect lost odyssey and a game that I really appreciate and actually loved a lot, which was Blue Dragon. The 360 had a hell of a year in 2007, so yeah, they weren't kidding. Certainly 2007 was Xbox's best gaming year ever. Of that, I don't think there's any argument. Ah, memories. But yeah guys, that will do it. Thanks so much for going down this trip of memory lane with me, the Midnight Chronicler. It was so, so much fun to talk about this with you guys. I love things that make me think of the good old days whether it be books whether it be video games whatever it's all content it's all things that we love and i hope you guys enjoyed this little trip down memory lane with me please like and subscribe join me on a journey of more nostalgic reading goodness guys thanks so much talk to you soon <laughs>